You are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. This is your boy, Studio MacGyver, and you are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. Welcome to the show, guys. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're into anime, nerd culture, and most importantly, video games, you come to the right place because we talk about all of that shit here. This is podcast episode number 365, and I'm going to discuss my anime watch list. I'm going to talk about Square Enix. I'm going to talk about Hellblade 2. I'm going to talk about Black Myth Wukong. I'm going to talk about some EA shit and uh, Summer Game Fest. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. It is uh, two o'clock in the morning and my daughter just went to sleep again. And this is kind of the battle that I'm having every week right now. And it's going to get worse in the summer because that's just what it is when a brother tends to stay up later. She tends to stay up later as well. And then they take long naps in the middle of the day. And you can kind of understand where that's going to go. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. That's what's going on. We're going to get into some shit, though. Let's talk a little bit about my anime watch list, because I have been watching a lot of anime guys. And I do mean a lot. It's just a great time to be an anime fan. I've just hadn't really had a lot of time to game. But I had just enough time to kind of look at anime and catch certain things and, and all of that. So just finished the latest episode of Kamitsu no Yaiba, a.k.a. Demon Slayer. And Tanjiro is doing his fucking thug thizzle. He is going through his training and you just got to love Tanjiro, man. You just got to love him. Like I said, besides Tanjiro, the only other player or character, shall I say, that I'm really uh, loving in this series is Rengoku. But besides Rengoku, Tanjiro is that guy. Those two are my top two <laughs> right there. But anyway, this dude is extra strong without even realizing it. He's just so down to earth. He's so naive in a sense. But please don't get it twisted. Tanjiro will handle you and butter will be put on the table if you cross him. OK, he's going to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And he swore up and down that he was going to end uh in this, this plight of the demons. So I can't wait. He's going to train next week somewhere else. It's going to get very interesting, guys. And they kind of foreshadowed the darkness to come. Some of the other Hashiras were talking about it. And it's going to get ugly. It's going to get extremely ugly. And they feel it. OK. And it's definitely going down very soon. The end is near. I said this last week and uh, it's no different now. But that's what I've been watching right now. Also, I got a couple surprises in here that I want to talk about. Uh, one is goes by the name of Shangri-La Frontier. This one here is just that surprise hit for me. Like I just it just came out of nowhere. OK, and I'm really enjoying the shit. It's about this uh, this VR player. OK, this video game player who. For some reason, for whatever reason, he enjoys playing the shitty games. OK, he goes and dumpster dives for shitty games, All right? games that only um, niche players play. It's a niche kind of thing that he, he's just going after. So finding games that nobody plays, finding games with glitches, all these other faults in the games and then beating them. OK, so it's almost like when you play a video game and when you play a flawed one, and then on top of that, there's glitches and there's all kinds of other shit going on that's added to the extra challenge already in the game. So he enjoys doing that. So that's all he does. You know, he doesn't go for the triple A titles, the ones that everybody plays. And that's his thing. Well, there's this chick who has a secret crush on him that goes to his school. For some reason, somebody talked him into playing one of this one of these triple A games. And he said, you know what? I'll give this one a try. Everybody's talking about it. it's got like 30 plus million players on it. I'll give it a try. So he goes home. He buys the game, plays it, and he really likes the game. He's creating his character. He's like, yo, I really dig this. 
and he creates he always does the silly shit okay he's the guy running around in all the rpgs with nothing but draws on and a fucking knife or some shit like that right so his character has <laughs> just some shorts all he has is a pair of shorts uh two knives okay and a bird mask that's it walking around looking silly as fuck whatever he doesn't care all right and he gets into the game he's he's out here in these streets and he's just trying to make it he slowly ups the ranks slowly learns and all his all his experience from playing these shitty games helps him out in this game because his stats his stat allocation where he puts his stats for his characters he he basically i guess in this game he's playing armor you know, it doesn't really do any good if you put your health to a certain degree. So his health is really low. So he's walking around. He can be killed very easily. And he's putting the stats in the speed and the luck. He puts a lot of it in luck and it pays dividends throughout this adventure. And I think the first season has about 24 episodes in it. I think I am at about halfway, I'm about the halfway mark, maybe 11, 12 episodes in something like that. But really enjoying this one. There's more to it than that. But the girl who has a crush on him uh, has already been playing the game and he runs into some, you know, some shady characters throughout the game that's trying to take him out or whatever. And his girlfriend, well, not his girlfriend, his his crush. She has she bought the game, you know, because she was hoping he would play the game. And her character is like really OP. They, she's known out there in those video game streets like she's a killer straight up. Uh, she's OP. Nobody really wants to fuck with her. And she's trying to use that as her segue into initiating a conversation with him because she hasn't been able to talk to him at school. And it's it's almost it's hard for her to do it in game as well. And like I said, I can describe it all I want, but you'd have to see it for yourself. The fucking anime is the shit is really dope. It's already been greenlit for season two already. This is definitely going to be a nice one. And I highly recommend this one. Like I said, I'm not even finished with it yet. I'm currently watching it now, but I am going to finish it. It should I should be done with that one next week for sure. Uh, but it, it's called, once again, Shangri-La Frontier. Definitely check this one out. And like it's an Isika game. It's it appeals to gamers, of course. And like I said, I think you guys would definitely get a kick out of this this one right here. And I'm already looking forward to season two. I haven't even got through season one. So definitely check this one out now. The other one is a oldie but goodie. OK, I haven't seen this anime in so many years. Like I want to say almost 20 years. I want to say almost 20 years. And this one is Yu Yu Hakusho. OK, one of the OGs out here in the anime scene. OK, and man, I forgot how dope this anime was. Like I completely forgot it because it, it was literally that long ago uh, when I saw it. But yes, watching this again, I think I'm on episode. I started from the beginning. I like I think I'm on episode like 22, 23, something like that. But oh, man, uh, just brings me back. This 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 anime is so good. If you guys haven't seen Yu Yu Hakusho, definitely, definitely. It's a must watch anime for any anime fan, especially Shonen. If you're a Shonen person, you definitely have to put this one under your radar. If you're into Dragon Ball like me, or if you're into Naruto, uh, you know, Bleach and some of these other ones, you know, One Piece and stuff like that, you definitely need to watch this one. Okay. I'm just telling you, characters are cool, the abilities, all of this stuff, man. He A, you got fucking, you know, Yusuke. There there's some dope characters in this. Uh Botan, like, yeah. It just brought me back and it just reminded me of Yo, how much I love anime, period, because it's one of the founding fathers, one of the first ones I, you know, I watched in my early anime journey. And along with like Inuyasha and stuff like that, th these are these are fucking gems. But definitely check it out. Dude is a spirit detective. If you guys don't know, if you know, if you never heard of this anime or if you've seen him but just didn't know. And it's easy to pass this one, especially the younger anime fans and stuff might not have seen this one. But I think it came out in 02 or 03. It was when it first debuted. So, yeah, but yeah, you, you play this spirit detective, you're your spirit detective and you are basically training to master your spirit energy. And that is basically a lot of your 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 offense. OK, um, he actually the main character, uh, Yusuke, is a bully. 
You know, he's a bad kid. He was, you know, getting into shit, you know, going around beating people's asses and shit like that. And then there's this one guy. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm, <laughs> he dies. OK, short. So long story short, he gets hit by a car trying to save this kid. He basically gets introduced with an ultimatum. If he's able to do certain things in the spirit world, then he can get his life back and he can be brought back to life. OK, that's how it starts. There's more to it than that. But yeah, definitely a classic. I'm watching this one as well. So right now it's a Yu Haka show. It's Shane, Rala, Frontier. Those are my main two. And then I'll piggyback because I am definitely going to be watching Blue Exorcist very soon. And I'm also going to be getting back into My Hero because My Hero season seven is is already out. It's been out for a while now, almost a month, I want to say. But I'm trying to wait for season seven to be done because everybody's saying it's getting really, really fucking good because it kind of put some people off, started to slow up, started to go different directions after a season. I want to say season four, starting in season four, really even starting. Yeah. Season four, part of season three, a little bit. And now it's season seven. Like I had the last season I watched was, I think, season three. I want to say season three. Yeah. Season three was the last one I watched and maybe season four. I, I, like I said, it's this is season seven now. So it's been a couple of seasons that I know I definitely missed. So, yeah, looking forward to getting back into my hero and uh, seeing where things are starting to go. So, yeah, th there's a lot of stuff. There's some other ones, too. I'm going to get into those you know, at another episode, but there's some other ones on my radar. I'm not going to bring them up now because I'm not going to watch them right now. I want to wait till I'm literally starting to watch them. And I think two of them are almost done. I know there's about eight or nine episodes on both of those right now. So uh, they're not finished. So that's another reason I want to let them finish. And I don't know if they're 12 episodes long or 24. You're starting to really see now a lot of these anime that come out now in current time they go to 12 or 13 episodes. They don't typically go that 24 to 26 episodes that a lot of these animes used to do. And I kind of miss that, you know, if I'm being honest, but it is what it is. Those are my anime right now. Definitely check out Yu Yu Hakusho, fucking classic. And uh, I'll definitely revisit that when I finish it uh, and uh, get back into that. But yeah, that's my anime watch list, guys. Now I want to kind of segue into, let's see, where should I go next? Let's go ahead and just talk about a little bit about Summer's Game Fest. I want to get you guys, you know, up to date on that. It's right around the corner. Summer Game Fest every summer. This is no different than the others, but it's June 7th is when it starts. And typically we get uh, we get a lot of uh, trailers and we get a lot of info and news on games that are coming out that are being worked on and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to what we're going to get uh, in summer and then games that are coming out soon. Uh, we, we, we get, you know, new trailers. Sometimes we even get long plays and stuff like that. So we can check out that now. Um, Xbox has a showcase coming up and I think June 9th they have theirs coming up. So trust me, I'm going to get into Xbox on this show, on this episode a little bit later in two shakes of a lamb's tail. But uh, summer's game, summer game fest 2024 is June 7th. So keep that on your your radar, guys. And I'll definitely keep you guys posted. So from about the 7th to the 9th, you have some other stuff trickle in after the 10th here and there. Uh, but definitely I'll be covering that for you guys and, and I'll keep you keep you laced up with uh, what's been going on. I'll definitely let you guys know. But anyway, that's that summer game fest news. Now, kind of from there, want to go ahead and just go ahead to E and talk about EA a little bit. EA has been working on some stuff. Of course, they got the typical shit that comes out every year, which is your Maddens, your, your, your soccer, all that shit. I think college football is now finally coming back because they, they took it off the table for some years. And I think now, I think July is when we're going to get finally um, an NCAA game again. Uh, and it's going to be in July sometime. So be looking out for that. If you guys were college fans, I know there's a lot of them out there. So going to be interested to see how that pans out. That's that's something that I might play. I'd play that over Madden right now. I'm just sick of, you know, Madden and the shit that they the blood sucking that they've been doing and not returning what people are paying every year. You get the same fucking game for the most part. Right. I want to see a a, 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 a leap. I want to see a difference. I really want to see other people with the NFL license is what I really would like to see. I'd like to see a 2K football game again. I really would. Those were the days. But anyway, 
EA has been working on a few things. Besides that, you have an Iron Man single player game coming out that they're supposedly working on. And if you didn't know, Black Panther is another single player open world game that they're working on. So looking forward to those for sure. And then there's a third Star Wars game. If you guys haven't heard about the other two. OK, Cal Kestis is that guy. And uh, that's what they got cooking right now. Uh, I don't know anything else. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that. Maybe you forgot sometimes, you know, our everyday life happens to me and I'm in the gaming sector. I forget all kinds of shit when it comes to video games and stuff. So, yeah, definitely be looking out for that. But anyway, next on the list, I think I want to tackle uh, I want to tackle Black Myth Wukong. This is a game that everybody's been talking about. Everybody's been anticipating. If you are a Dark Souls fan you're definitely going to appreciate this. This is one of those games that is, I think, going to do great things. I cannot wait to see what this game has to offer. But we did get some news on this game. OK, it drops in August. So at the end of August, I want to say August 30th or some shit like that or 27th, but it's late August. But this is definitely one of my radar. I cannot wait to play it. It's definitely a day one for me personally. And some news came out. A new trailer came out, which looked awesome, by the way. But yeah, got some nice, juicy information on this game, guys. That makes me even more excited to play this. Now, this game is going to have New Game Plus out the box day one, which is beautiful right? for a lot of you guys. Multiple endings, which is always dope in these type of games. Over 160 enemy types. That's crazy. <laughs> Over 160 different enemy types. Just let that sink in for a minute. Just for just for a taste, just let it sink in. That's a lot. But anyway, over 40, I'm not 40, excuse me, over 80 bosses. All right. Now, a little side tangent on this. If you didn't know about the game or the, the background of the game or how it even started, it's it's kind of uh, the, the um, what's the word I'm trying? How am I trying to explain this? I want to say. The motivation behind making this game has to do with a story, a famous Chinese story called Journey to the West. All right. And in that book, in that story, there were like 80 challenges that the character had to overcome. And that's kind of a parallel with why you have 80 bosses in this. I thought that was pretty dope. And also just a little tidbit, as far as the difficulty is concerned from what people have been saying, they're basically saying that. The game is slightly easier than your typical Dark Souls or your Souls like game. So and, and the key word is slightly. OK, <laughs> so you're definitely going to get that challenge. You're definitely going to get to get that challenge. There's going to be a lot of pissed off people. There's going to be some broken controllers, all that that happens in all Souls games. And if it's anywhere in that same realm, you're going to get that. Uh, another game I could kind of, I guess, compare that with is something like um Armor Core 6 that just came out not too long ago. That game, in my opinion, wasn't as hard as like your typical Souls games. But hey, it depends on who you talk to with that one, too. I'll be honest. But for me personally, it didn't seem as as hard, but it does. <laughs> trust me, it has its challenges, man. Um, you definitely got to be a certain type of person to push through that all the way, let alone, you know, multiple times. But I kind of compare it to that. So you're going to definitely get your challenge. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing this. That, that's all the information I have on that. But that right there alone, even before all that, knowing that information, it was already day one for me. But now knowing all that and knowing that all this comes day one, that's going to be delicious. And I don't know about photo mode yet. I'm assuming there's going to be a photo mode. If there's not day one, there probably will be one soon after. They'll probably do something like uh, what they're doing with Stellar Blade, which they just had an update and we got a photo mode. And uh, I'm still I forgot what area I'm in right now. I haven't played. I haven't played anything in a couple of days, um, but and I don't know when I'll be able to play again. Probably not until uh, Wednesday because I don't I'm working until Tuesday. So Tuesday is my Friday, basically. So, yeah, I won't even probably see a controller, to be honest with you, until Wednesday sometime. And uh, yeah, so. That's why I've been kind of watching anime and doing all this shit, because I have just enough time to watch that and not, you know, what I mean, I can lay, watch it in bed because it's on my phone or I can take that anywhere. And that's what I've been doing. Even at work, I've been kind of watching shit here and there. I've been watching Yu Yu Hakusho at work and shit. So, you know, can't really do that with the game. 
type of thing. And yeah, it's I'm going off on a whole new tangent. But anyway, Black Myth Wukong is going to come out in August. Can't wait to play it. You guys should be excited for this one. Anyway, let's move on. And I want to talk about I want to talk about Hellblade 2. OK, the reviews are out. The butter's on the table, depending on who you speak to. And uh, some people are saying it's good. Some people are saying it's trash. And this is definitely this one is torn. OK, I've seen IGN 8 out of 10. I think GameSpot gave it a 6 out of 10 Metacritic 81 percent as of this podcast right now. What I hear most people say about this game is that it's a cinematic game. And that's pretty much what it is. It's in it's in it's a cinematic experience. Some people call it a walking simulator. OK, now I don't know how much this game is. I want to say that the game is seventy dollars between 50 and 70 dollars, something like that. I don't I don't remember if it's a full price, but I will tell you this. The game was in development for seven years. OK, the average play time is five to six hours. All right. I've even heard people say that for a hour straight, you go through the game just literally lighting fucking lighting bonfires or lighting fucking, I don't know, lighting something. OK, through the game. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's definitely a story driven experience. If, if that's what it sounds like to me, it's like very high, really cinematic and it's an experience to have one time and just be done with it. Now, it's free on Game Pass now. I haven't, like I said, I haven't played anything. I don't know if I'm going to play it. I tried the first one and I didn't really like the first one, man. It just it didn't really do it for me. This one's probably going to be the same. Like I said, especially if you have periods of time where you're doing that. OK. And like I said, some people get into that cinematic type of thing. They 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 watch it. They're here for it. And that's beautiful. That's good for them, you know, but other people like me, uh, I need to play something. I need to, to push more than one button. There's this meme that uh, is crazy. I'm going to probably I'm going to find the picture and use it for the thumbnail for the YouTube uh, when I upload this to YouTube. But it's a it's a picture with the fucking logo of Hellblade 2 on it. And it's on a <laughs> it's on the Xbox controller, but the Xbox controller doesn't have anything on. It doesn't have any analogs or anything. It has one button. It has an A button on there. That's it. <laughs> I saw that shit and I just started rolling. These fucking memes, man, I'm telling you, they have me rolling all the fucking time. This shit is ridiculous. But <laughs> I mean, I was crying for at least 20 minutes when I saw that. I couldn't get that image out of my head. And I was just, yo, I'm telling you. But. Yeah. So you're, you're going to literally just push one button, you know, throughout your whole experience for the most part is what people are saying. So, um, you know, I just say if you're trying to buy this, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to me personally to spend a certain amount of money on something that wasn't in development for that long. And it's only going to be that short. And it's just you're not it's not even you're not really playing the game. You know, you might get out of that whole game. 25, 30 minutes of actual playtime in that in that whole experience. And I'm, I'm just throwing numbers out there, guys, but I'm just looking at the length and everything else and what people are saying. And I'm just drawing my own conclusions. But like I said, that's just that's something I wouldn't pay for. Like I said, Game Pass is there for a reason. So you, if you want to experience it, that go ahead, check it out. Or, you know, when you want to watch somebody play it, check that out, you know. But that's the dilemma with Hellblade 2 and what they're doing with this game. I don't know what else to say. With all the money that Microsoft has, though, it's just it's got to be frustrating sometimes. Right. It has to be to some people like you spend all this time on this game. And this is what you have. You have a five hour game. What, what are you guys doing? What, what's going on here, man? And then you turn around and you fire and you, you kill four of your studios. Uh, there's two that I know of, but they actually killed four of them. But two of them, uh, one of them did. I can't, remember the fuck, can't remember the goddamn name arcane studios and then the other one is tango studios which did hi-fi rush and hi-fi rush won all these fucking awards and had these accolades and it wasn't enough for them if you're not pulling in that call of duty money they got no time for you you know you're on a short leash is what it looks like or if they happen to just like your studio you know a lot so if i'm a businessman and i'm looking at shit on paper 
and they come and tell me, yo, it's going to take about seven years to make. We're going to charge this for it. And the game's only going to be five to six hours long. I'm like, wait a minute. We need to go back to the drawing board. This is wrong. This isn't, we're not, no, we're not doing, we're not making this game. Okay. That That's just me. That's just my humble opinion. That's, that's what I would do. Uh, you know, if I'm looking at it on paper. Okay. And then you also have to consider the gamers like, yo, the majority of gamers, when you spend 50, 60, $70 on a game, you're going to want to get your money's worth. And this is definitely not that thing. Okay. This is not something I want to play when my mom goes to the grocery store and does a little shopping here and there and comes back home and I've, the credits are rolling. You know what I mean? You might as well go ahead and pull out the game, ask your mom where the butter is, tell her, take the top off, warm it up, and then stick that fucking game in there and that butter. I mean, I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, some of these decisions that that Microsoft is making, I know you have more money than God, but come on, man. I mean, now it's just now you're just fucking playing. Now you're just fucking around, flexing your muscles. OK, flexing your cash and just saying, you know what? Nigga, we can do whatever the fuck we want. We can because we are. We're doing it right now in front of your faces. Uh, and if you're if you're not a casual gamer, you're going to f- you're going to notice this. You're going to feel this. If you're a multiple console owner, you're you know, you're going to feel this, you know, a little bit. You are. I'm and I'm always a guy who preaches about Game Pass. I'm always a guy you're going to hear talk about the good as well as the ugly. But I'm not going to leave out, you know, shit that needs to be dressed. OK, I don't care what system it is. I don't care how much I love it, how much I hate it. If you shit on yourself and it's something your name is Sony. Guess what? I'm going to point and let everybody know, hey, Sony shit on himself and he needs to uh, he needs to wipe himself. He needs to go clean himself. He needs to uh, get in some water and wash all this butter off of him. I'm going to say that. OK, everybody who listens to this podcast, all my OG listeners know that I love Sony. OK, cool. Not a secret. All right. It's not it's also not a secret that I own all these consoles. Okay. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, Xbox. All right. Own them all. Play them all. Love them all. There's and and I'm gonna find faults in them all, and I'm gonna find great things in them too. Like I said, if Game Pass, trust me, if Game Pass was shitty to me and it didn't help me and do anything for me personally, I would let you know that. OK, I'm just speaking from my experience with Game Pass for me, Game Pass. It works because I get to play games that I would normally eventually buy or want to play. OK, Persona 3 Reload. All right. On At the end of this month, Lords of the Fallen. I remember when Wulong Fallen Dynasty came out, played that. And, and the list goes on and on. There were games that come out and then just their their regular library of games. OK. And then I, I like their 360 library. OK. That I that I enjoy. So there's games there. There are. OK. There There's fucking Splinter Cell Blacklist. I just bought not too long ago on there. There is uh, Max Payne 3. I also bought on there. You know, they made it easy. You can't do that with with Sony because they're not giving us those PlayStation three games. Now, this is just my personal experience, things that I want to play and I'm trying to get access to it, You know, I'm not Bobby or Jerry or Tony. I'm just saying my personal studio MacGyver's, you know, personal preference. And then I have a son who plays video games and it's perfect for him. So it's not going to be like that for everybody. But there are other people out there that play video games that are. They have similar circumstances and that are using it for that. Okay, if that makes sense. So for me, Xbox has a lot of uses. Game Pass is still that thing for me. And until they prove otherwise, I will continue to use them. Okay. now when it comes to their IPs, that's a whole nother fucking story. That's a whole nother ball game. Okay, and I have called them out constantly. I have always called them out on that. Their IPs are trash. Okay. Cause they're not giving us any, they're not, they, they promise us the moon and the stars and the sun, and we get none of it. We still don't know when fable is coming out. 
I don't know if it even is coming out. And it, the list goes on and on and on. OK, so they pretty much made it clear that all of that stuff is going to be dead anyway. They're just going to be a third party company. All right. So if they do come out with something like a fable or whatever it is, guess what? It's going to be available for everyone. OK, it's not going to be exclusive to them. So, you know, the only thing left is, OK, what's good on Xbox? What games are going to come day one on Xbox? They're already going to do Call of Duty, which is a plus if you're a Call of Duty player. OK. And then other games that I've mentioned previously and other games beyond that will come out for Game Pass. So then it's just kind of like, OK, uh, if you have Game Pass, you're going to get this, you're going to get that, along with the other games that are on that library that you can use and have on your backlog when you just want to play something different. OK, when you just want something else to play. So it has its uses is what I'm saying. But at the same time, that's why I have a Sony, because I love their first party games. Same thing with Nintendo. There's only shit you're going to get on Nintendo. OK, Mario RPG, you know, shit like that. You're not getting that on anything else. OK, the Zelda games, you're not getting that on anything else. So that's why I got a fucking Nintendo switch. OK, same reason why I'm going to get the new Nintendo when it comes out. Same reason that when the other ones come out, I'm going to get those too, because I love it. At the end of the day, I love video games. OK. All right. At the end of the day, that's what I'm here for. So it kills me to see people bickering and arguing and, you know, shitting on one console or the or the other one. I get a kick out of it. I still sit back and, and, and enjoy it and, and, and laugh at it. But it still perplexes me because it doesn't make sense to me, really. I think everybody loves video games. We all play and it shouldn't matter what system you play it on, you know. To be honest with you, but it is what it is, man. You know, you're not going to stop those people from, you know, dissing one console or the other. It's, it is going to it's going to be what it's going to be. So I'm just going to enjoy myself. OK, and play what I like to play and just do my thing. That's the news on that, man. I mean, I don't know. I just think uh, I really hope that they find a way to do something. Something. And give us another IP, at least before they fizzle out and, uh, you know, go this third party route. But that's that. That's I'm going to move on. And I want to talk now. I want to talk about Square Enix. Yeah. Square Enix has finally decided, which I'm not really surprised, but I'm just uh, Square Enix is finally going third party. They said, you know what? Fuck this. All right. Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 16 didn't bring in the numbers that we wanted. OK, they underachieved, which is really hard to believe. I mean, they still did well, but at the same time, they were hoping for bigger numbers. All right. They thought they were going to just bring in the hype train with all of this shit. Now, Final Fantasy 16, there were some people who were turned off on it because of the approach that they had with it. They had one. One protagonist. They didn't have a group, a team that you could control. And that turned some people off. Also, you know, a lot of people still dig the turn based stuff and they weren't feeling that. And that was that. And you didn't have an option like you did on Final Fantasy seven remake to do that, to play either way. And then Final Fantasy seven remake, you know, that just. It just didn't do as, as good as a lot of people thought that it would do. And I think part of that is the fact that they're breaking it up the way they're breaking it up. Like I have a friend who just hates that. He said he's not going to touch it until he can get all of them. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to put all these out and then they're going to, you know, wait a year if that, and then give you all of them in a big pack and just say, fuck it here. Here, here is everything for one set price. And that's what they're going to do. Let's keep, let's be honest with each other. That's what's going to happen. Um, and so he's just waiting for that, you know, so I understand that. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But Square Enix said, you know, we're tired of just putting out all these games, publishing all these games, not just those franchises, but other ones, because they're quick to publish. They, Square Enix was always coming out with something. All right. Uh, they did a lot of mediocre games or a lot of double A games, you know, which are, you know, most of the time, most of their games are excellent. That's why I love them, because they do produce or publish excellent games. And 
they said, you know, we're just going to go the third party route now because we're missing out. If we would have put out Final Fantasy seven remake on multiple platforms or if we did Final Fantasy 16 on multiple platforms, we would have saw that money at least uh, we, we would have got close to a double. And that's what they want to see. They want to see more numbers. So they're going to focus on spreading the love. And at one point, everybody thought that Sony was going to buy Square Enix because they were constantly dealing with them. And I did, too. I was really thinking that was going to happen, almost hoping it would happen. But I guess everybody wins still in the end. I mean, Nintendo still does some stuff with Square Enix as well. So I'm not going to sit there and say they don't. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's going to make everybody happy because now all the Xbox fans and stuff, hey, they're going to be able to partake in a lot of this stuff, man. And some they have. There are some games that they have, you know, been able to play. I remember when uh, what came out? Nier Automata came out on Xbox and Visions, Visions of Mana is uh, coming out on Xbox as well. So there are games that are doing that. Yeah. So. It's going to be nice to see how that uh, transpires. OK, I'm not one of those selfish gamers. It's like, oh, my God, my my feelings are hurt because Square Enix are they're starting to give they're published more games. They're starting to do it everywhere. And it makes sense because if uh, they're going, if Xbox is going to go third party anyway, I mean, it's just everybody's going to share everything. As, as it should be for the most part, you know, I'm sure there'll be some exceptions to this rule, of course, uh, when certain games are developed and certain companies say, yo, this game is going to be a big one. We want exclusive. We want this game to be exclusive, even if it's just for six months. We'll go ahead and pay you guys for that. And and some sometimes they'll do that. So, we'll, you know, I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. But that's the news right now for Square Enix. That's pretty much going to do it. For this episode, man, it's another short one. It wasn't as long as I would have liked it to be, but I got my points across. All of my fucking eyes are dotted and my T's are crossed. So, yeah, um, I'll keep you guys posted next week and uh, let you know what's going on there. Uh, Lords of the Fallen should be coming out pretty soon. I definitely want to try that out. Try the online play a little bit there. Get a taste of that. And I'll you know give you guys a little bit of uh, info on that. So if you have Game Pass, and you haven't played Lords of the Fallen, definitely check that out. And it'd be something to get into real quick before the DLC of Elden Ring comes out, because Elden Ring is coming out in about three weeks, two and a half, three weeks. It's coming very soon. So I need to, I guess, get back in there because I still haven't beaten Elden Ring yet. Personally, I still there's still a lot of bosses I have not fucked with. So, yeah, I need to call my boys up and say, yo, let's run through these real quick and get ready for this DLC. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming out, guys. So definitely be prepared for that. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank everybody for downloading screen streaming, excuse me, uh, listening to the podcast. And if you're new to the show, guys, hey, I want to see you guys next week. Come back. We do this every Monday. Same bat time, same bat channel. I'm going to edit this video real quick. I am going to uh, watch some anime, some Yu Yu Hakusho, probably Yu Yu Hakusho. And uh, yeah, man, get into some gangster shit. But anyway, check me out on my social handles, guys. Check me out on X slash Twitter at Studio MacGyver. Also, Instagram at Studio MacGyver. Check out me on TikTok at Random Gameplay Pimpin and YouTube at Random Gameplay Pimpin. Haven't been doing a lot of videos, but I do put these episodes up and I'll be doing, you know, video here, video there. I just don't have the time and I've accepted that. So I'm just going to do it when I have time and I can. But anyway, I love you guys dearly. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next week. This is your boy, Studio MacGyver. And you have been listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. See you next time.